Well, hiya, BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. It is Tuesday again, so it is Tag Tuesday. And I just happened to be tagged this last weekend by Ryan at Book Time with Ryan. He he asked me in the comments field of one of my videos if I would do the whale tag. That was an original tag by him. Um, I believe he did it in connection with Earth Day. Uh, and so I wanted to go ahead and participate in this. And I guess before I get going on this, I do want to say uh, sorry about not getting videos out more regularly. I think I only did one last week and maybe one the week before and or none the week before. <laughs> and of course, this is the first one for this week. Life has been very busy at school. We've hit that that time in April and May when when everything goes into fast forward. And if you don't get your work done, then um, you're going to get lost. And so I've been trying to get my work done. We've had track, uh, our track season is going for middle school. We're right, we just passed the halfway point last Thursday. And um, we've been having a pretty good season. Um, we've been, you know, hitting a lot of personal records with the kids and just getting better and better. We've, the kids have uh, you know, gotten several first, second, and third places, and so I've been really concentrating on that, and then I got to really get concentrating on, you know, making sure my, my grades are all caught up as we head into the last part of the school year. So anyway, not to try to make excuses, but that is my excuse. We've been uh, pretty busy at school, but I really hope to when, especially when summer hits, uh, at the very end of this month and then on into June and July, I would really like to try to get videos up every, every other day. That's what I'm going to be shooting for. So, uh, please be patient while we wait on school to get finished up. We want to finish on a strong note and not take away kit time from the kids. So, um, that's where my focus is right at the moment, but I will be bringing videos back to you. So, Anyway, um, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, this is the whale tag. I believe he did this with, um, you know, with, with Earth Day in mind. So here we go, Ryan. Let's go ahead and get this going. So number one, a blue whale. The blue whale is the largest, heaviest animal on Earth ever. What's the longest book you've read or want to read? Or what's the heaviest subject you've read about? Okay, so... As I got to thinking about it, I've read several or at least a handful of books that are over a thousand pages. I have read some big, big books, um, but the one that uh, stood out without having to, you know, go through the, the bookshelves and actually uh, pull every book off the shelf. Everybody's asleep upstairs, so I don't want to go up and, you know, rummage around. But the one that really popped in my head right off the get go was the book by Stephen King, The Stand. Um and of course, that's a end of times book, really good book. Um, and when I looked it up online, I knew it was really big. I knew it was over a thousand. I couldn't remember how many. But when I looked it up, it was 1,388 pages, the version that I found online. And so um, I have read that. It's a book I'd like to reread sometime. I, I enjoyed the read. Um, and so that's, that is my, uh, my blue whale of my books, that I, at least right off the top of my head. I do have one, give me just a second. I have one that I do plan on reading soon. Well, where is it? And of course I can't find it. Um, the Count of Monte Cristo. I can't find it right this second. I thought it was right there. Oh, there it is right there. It is right there. I do plan on reading The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, this was the unabridged version that I bought at Barnes & Noble uh, last fall, maybe, or last Christmas, and uh, got it for eight bucks, and it's a big one also. It, uh, let's see, it comes in at 1,000 and, oh, be patient with me here, pages are not wanting to move 1065 pages uh so that's also a blue whale of a book i've uh i have read an abridged version of that and really really enjoyed it i've never read the full version and i if i can get my reading to a point where i've gotten caught up because i've got like three or four really big books going right now if i can get those caught up 
I would like to join, if I can, I'd like to join the read-along that is going to be uh, going on on BookTube. And um, I just, I got to get myself to a point where I can do that. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and move on to number two. Number two is sperm whale. Sperm whales routinely dive to a depth of 2,000 feet to feed on squid, but can dive to a depth of 10,000 feet. What is a book that has motivated you to look deeper into a subject, character, situation, or series? Okay, so the one that kind of popped in my head was uh, I, I read The Last Stand by Nathaniel Philbrick. And if you're not familiar with that, that deals with Custer's Last Stand. And I really like Nathaniel Philbrick's, Philbrick's writing. And I probably picked that book up more because of the author than the subject. Not that the subject wasn't interesting, but when I was hunting for something to read, I was wanting to read his books. But I picked that up and the subject really fascinated me. And he did such a good job writing and telling that story that later that uh, throughout the spring and summer of, and this was a couple of years ago, but throughout the spring and summer, I ended up reading like four more books on Custer's Last Stand because I just found it you know, that interesting. And then, uh, you know, lo and behold, uh, Todd from Todd's Bursting Bookcase, he had sent me a box of books a while back, and there were several things on Custer's Last Stand. So that's, I'm going to end up reading those sometime. And, um, you know, it just, it caused me to dive deeper into that subject on um, uh, his, his the, the battle that Custer had with the Native Americans. So, uh, Let's see here. Number three, the humpback whale. Humpback whales sing long, complex songs that they have in common with other individual humpback whales. These songs can change uniformly for entire groups of whales. What is a book that has changed meaning for you over the years, and why did it change? Okay, so I, I am going to choose the Bible, and i got to stop for a second. The Bible has not changed. But my, my view of the Bible has changed from time to time as, as I have grown and I have, you know, I've had different situations, different experiences come about. You know, I go back and I reread the Bible. And um, as I'm doing that, there are a lot of times that uh, I, I read a passage. I may have read it 10 different times, but I get something new out of that passage depending on what my life experiences, you know, it, it, it speaks to me in different ways. And, um, I've just, I, over the years, I have found that the, the Bible has definitely been with me as I've, as I've needed it to be with me. It's always been there and it, it always gives me advice in whatever situation I've been in. So, um, that's how I'm going to answer that. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, uh, it, it definitely speaks to me. So it, it doesn't change, but when I'm reading it, I get a different piece of information out of maybe a text I've read 10 different times, and I'm looking at it from different light. Uh, number four, orca. Orcas, or killer whales, are incredibly smart social, uh, social whales, dolphins. What's a book you felt was especially smart fiction or nonfiction, and made you really think. I had a couple of them, and they're pretty small books, but they're classics in literature. Um, and I chose these two because they really speak to different social events that were going on at the time that they were written. And I'm going to put up uh, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells and Animal Farm by George Orwell. And, uh, of course, The Time Machine, when... Um, and I can't even think of the main character's name, but when he goes back in time, um, it, it is going to reflect what was going on in the, I believe it was 1880s or 1890s in England. And it was the, the, the issues that were going on in society between the rich and the poor and, and the working class and, and, you know, stuff like that. And it was a, it, it really, uh, really made me think. I, I thought that was a really, cool reflection of what the current events of that time period were. And then Animal Farm really speaks to, um, you know, communism. <laughs> I mean, it hit communism big time. And, and um, if, 
if you don't understand what was going on in Russia back in that time period, you're probably not going to understand the full impact of the book. But if you have that, if, if you have that, uh, that knowledge of what was going on, this book is very powerful. Uh, and, and they're both not very, they're pretty simple reads. So anybody could read them. And I'm guessing that you know, you could probably get different interpretations of that based on your, your background knowledge. So, number five, beluga. Belugas are nicknamed the canaries of the seas because of the sounds they make. What's a book you wanted to talk to others about after reading it and why? Um, I put on here uh, The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I read this, uh, was it last year? Last, last, at the beginning of last summer, maybe? And I absolutely love that book. It was very powerful. It dealt with some major, major issues in society. You know, it talked about, um, excuse me, it talked about abuse. It talked about alcoholism, talked about PTSD. It talked about neglect, um, talked about relationships, talked about love and, you know, what is love, what is not love. Um, it just, it hits so many major issues and I just wanted to talk about it. The only problem was nobody in my family had read the book and we were in summertime. So I wasn't around like the teachers and stuff, which I don't know that they read it either. Uh, I wanted to talk to my wife about it and she said, don't, don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. I want to read it. She still hasn't read the book. <laughs> She has intentions to, but she has not yet. Uh, I think she started it, but anyway, that is one that I really wanted to talk talk to people about just because it, it was so powerful. Um, number six, narwhal. Male narwhals, known as the unicorns of the seas, have two teeth, including one long spiraled tooth that can grow nearly nine feet long. What's a book you heard great things about before reading only to discover it was less magical after reading it? Um, so the one I chose for this was a book by one of my favorite authors, H.W. Brands. He's a great historian who can really spin a yarn. He, he uh, tells a great story. He goes a lot of times into great detail. But, um, well, Peg and I over at the History Shelf, we buddy read The Zealot and the Emancipator, which was talking about Abraham Lincoln and John Brown and their roles in abolishing slavery. And we had like great expectations because both of us love H.W. Brands and his writing. And I think um, if you was to ask her, we would be on the same opinion that he wrote this book for the masses. He He did not go into the depth that he usually goes into. And a lot of his more current books have started doing that. And I think that probably happens when um, historians start pumping out books like one a year or sometimes even two in a year. When they start, you know, mass producing those books uh, or writing those books, uh, the, the, the detail and, you know, just diving deep into the subject sometimes goes by the wayside. And I think it happened in this book. And it's not that it's a bad book. It's a good book. Um, I would recommend it to people, but uh, it's not for somebody who's probably serious in history, uh, somebody who's very well read, just because it's it, it kind of just skims the top for the most part. Um, so that was that was a little bit of a disappointment. It, uh, it it lost a little bit of its magic because of that. Number seven, the bowhead uh, whale. While it's evident bowhead. And it might be bowhead. I'm, I'm not sure how to say it, but I'm going to go with bowhead whales live well beyond 100 years of age. There's evidence they may be they may live to be 200 years old. What is the oldest book in your collection or what book has been in your collection the longest? OK, so again, without rating the bookshelves and checking all of the all of the dates, um, I can't like 100 percent tell you which book is the oldest. I know I have. Uh, probably a shelf full of, if not a couple shelves full of books from the 1800s. I know I have that. I have I have a couple from the mid 1800s and I'm pretty sure I have one from the early 1800s. And so I've got some, some fairly old books. I know there's lots of you out there who've got way older than that, but f for my collection, that's probably about it. There's tons of them from the 1880s and 1890s. Um, but, um, the oldest book that I have owned, uh, 
so so I've owned it the longest is the probably the little kid books that I've showed you before on this channel my dinosaur books from when I was in first grade I still have those up up the upstairs in the in the upper room where I keep most of my books but um like I said, as far as the oldest goes, I'd have to go check dates. I know I have several from the 1800s. Um, I have a I have a pretty good collection of Robinson Crusoe books, and I have a handful of them that are from the 1800s. Those are those are some of my prized possessions. Um, all right, so number eight, almost done here. Number eight, the Atlantic gray whale. Atlantic gray whales were sadly wiped out by humans. Today, only Pacific gray whales remain. Save the Whales, what's one book that's either out of print or out of fashion that you wish you could make a comeback? Okay, so I don't even know if the book I'm going to mention is considered out of print because they just came out with a new edition a few years back of the Kent Family Chronicles, the eight-volume series, uh, historical fiction series that takes us from the American Revolution all the way up to the 1890s, I believe. Um and like I said, eight volumes. It's by John Jakes. It's one of my favorite series of books. I've read it, I don't know how many times, several times. I'm going to be reading like volume three again this summer with uh, Scott over at the Bookish Bryants. I believe we're going to try to read that again. And uh, we've been, we read the first two volumes. But anyway, um, they came out with a new paperback of that. It had new artwork and stuff on the on the covers. And I probably ought to buy the whole eight volume series just to get up on my shelf just because of the artwork and stuff with it being, you know, my favorite series. But um, they did not come out with hardback. I would love for them to come out with a hardback um, set of that. Some of those Let's see, did they go back to 1770, or excuse me, did they go back to 1974 or 5, 76, right in there? Because it was for the Bicentennial series, but I can't remember exactly when they did the first volume or two. But I would like to see them come out with, you know, because we're coming up on the, that'd be almost the 50th anniversary of those books. I would love to see a 50th anniversary hardcover of the Kemp Family Chronicles. So if you're a publisher that's watching this channel, and I don't know that there are any, <laughs> but if you are, if if you make that, I will buy it. Uh, I want a new series. My my old version, they're, they're really falling apart on the shelves, but I'd like to have a, a real nice hardback new edition of the Kemp Family Chronicles. All right, so here's a bonus question. Uh, Moby Dick. Moby Dick was the great white sperm whale Captain Ahab never caught. What is a book you want to own but haven't found or bought? What's stopping you from hooking that book? All right, so for me, um, if you follow the channel, you know I love Abraham Lincoln and biographies on Lincoln, and so I have a, a pretty good size collection. This, let's see, yeah, several several books on this shelf right here are on Lincoln. Um once one uh, two volume set that I want to get is Michael Burling Games Abraham Lincoln a life uh, and like I said two volumes but they are massive so there are two reasons I haven't hooked that book and one reason is to get a new copy they're extremely expensive and it's a two volume set so it'll be times two to get you know to get the books so that's one reason so cost has kept me from doing it and then number two is all of the reviews that I saw online, or a lot of the reviews, say that the book is so thick that um, when you buy the copy, the spine breaks very, very easily. And so that is kind of, um, it's kind of kept me from from buying it. Although probably nobody else is going to read it in my house, I'm guessing, and I will be the only one. And as long as I keep, you know, take care of it, it should be all right. But I would hate to spend a ton of money on a book and then after one reading have it snap. And that, that kind of bothers me. So that's the reason I haven't hooked that book. So scientists tag whales to help study their behaviors, such as migration. Tag five booktubers to complete this tag and remember, save the whales. So I am going to tag Scott and Becky over at the Bookish Bryants. I'm going to Tag Mark over at Book Time with Elvis. I'm going to tag Arion and Prometheus over at Book Zealots. 
I'm going to tag um, Colin at page to page. And then I think the last one I'm going to do, because I just really want to hear, I know he doesn't do, uh, really do tags or very many tags anyway, but I would really love to hear his answers because I think he would have great answers, um, is John David. So John David, if you're watching, love to hear you do this tag. I know you don't do a lot of tags, if any. I, I don't know if I've seen you do any tags, but I would love to hear your answers to it. So anyway, those are my five booktubers. Again, this was... Uh, the whale tag in honor of Earth Day. It was an original done by Ryan at Book Time with Ryan. Uh, go check out Ryan's channel. He's a great booktuber, nice guy. Uh, got great content. I always enjoy listening to his videos. And um, so anyway, uh, I guess, uh, you know, save the whales and happy reading. <laughs>